In this place, the unfinished conflict between mainland China and Taiwan is up close and personal. Kinmen Island lies just five kilometers from the Chinese city of Xiamen, and relics of the time the two warring sides traded shots even in the 1950s abound. These days, the tension is back, but so far taking a less kinetic form. At Maestro Wu's, they have a swords into plowshares type of business, turning shell casings from those earlier skirmishes into razor-sharp knives. Tourists love dropping in here, but these days trade is suffering because ferries to and from the mainland have been stopped for the past three years, initially because of COVID, but now as part of the new struggle with China, one in which embargo and blockade have taken the place of shelling. The defences rusting on Kinmen's beaches tell of a past danger, but that doesn't mean there aren't new storm clouds gathering now. The risks, though, lie well away from here. If the People's Republic judged the military and political risks of invading this place just five kilometers off the coast and defended by a few thousand troops to be too great. Imagine then the calculation about trying the same thing with Taiwan itself, more than 150 kilometers away and defended by hundreds of thousands of soldiers. The real issue here then is not that of an imminent D-Day invasion, but of a competition that's becoming increasingly intense between China and the US in which Taiwan is caught up as a player. Approaching Taipei, capital of Taiwan, you're reminded that conquering this main island, home to 24 million people, sprawling cities and high mountains, would hardly be straightforward. And here there are more modern defenses too. At Sinshu Science Park, we got rare access into Taiwan's usually secretive microchip industry. All these hard zones are proprietary uh, know-how or trade secret. This is where the huge crystals used to make them are grown. Taiwan dominates global production of the processors in almost every device you use. This is the, end, the product out of the crystal puller. You can slice into 2,000 of uh, wafer. Just very thin slices all the way through? Yeah. China and the rest of the global economy have every incentive not to disrupt this vital business. But now the US is ordering advanced chip makers to stop supplying China. But you're already feeling the effect of yes. the new US regulations. Yeah. Yes, we have to follow immediately. In this hall, silicon crystals are sliced into the wafers that chips are made of. The tolerances are exacting. And this is one of only five plants in the world making wafers this size. Taiwan's extraordinary dominance in the area of microchip manufacturing has led to the concept, appropriately enough, of the silicon shield. The idea that these unique abilities and the damage that would be done to the global economy by a war that interrupted the supply of these chips makes this place safer. So do the new American rules turn this industry from something that shielded Taiwan into something that China will now want to grab? Opinion here is divided about whether bans will accelerate confrontation or whether that's a necessary risk to stymie China's progress in high tech. For the US, it's a must. You cannot let a uh, uh, Chinese <coughs> regime get stronger and stronger. That's a major threat to, to the world's democracy, freedom, <clears throat> yeah, over humanity. So I think uh, the Americans are doing the right thing to cut off the supply of their high-tech te technology, kind of a, to stop them growing into a real monster. 
That sense that confrontation might be moving closer intensified in August, at the time of US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit. In exercises that followed, Chinese planes surged into the air defense zone, warships surrounded the island, and missiles fired from the mainland flew over it. It demonstrated an ability to blockade or coerce Taiwan with measures short of all-out invasion. And although America is pledged to support Taiwan, its former defense chief believes that the US Navy cannot be relied upon to break a blockade. Nobody can be relied on except yourself. You know, this will be a good thing that the, if the uh, United States will come to aid when there's war across the straits. But the United States has its own consideration. They have their own national interest, the global interest. And so, so we just cannot guarantee that the United States will dispatch the uh, kind of a naval power to, to protect us and so on. In a school hall in Taipei, lessons in self-reliance. Volunteers by the dozen for first aid trauma training. Of course, that's useful in many ways, not least the major earthquakes feared here. But when we asked people why they'd come, most gave the same answer. I think there is a big chance that war is happening uh, between China and Taiwan. So I'm here to prepare for any situation that might happen. I think we need to address it. Yeah, we need to. But most of Taiwanese maybe feel like, no, that's just like a rumor. No, we won't have the attack or something. But I think we have to prepare well in the future. I will, I will say yes. That's one of the reasons I think most of the young people are here. I'm very surprised that there are more young people there, like middle-aged people like me, to be here. I think it's mainly because of the China, threat from China. As to the prospect of actual shrapnel or gunshot wounds, China's show of strength in August and the invasion of Ukraine have had an effect on the mood here. The government is soon expected to extend the period of national military service and is acquiring new weapons as it tries to galvanize the public about the risks of invasion. We don't know when China is going to launch an attack against Taiwan, but when China does that, we want to be ready. And therefore, we hope the weapons that we have been seeking uh, will also be uh, delivered. So you say when China does that. It's, is it inevitable, do you think, that they'll attack? Uh, I'm not sure whether it's inevitable. Uh, but if you look at uh, the Chinese situation, uh, we guess, or we shouldn't have uh, too much optimism, uh, or we shouldn't be, um, you know, leave it too lightly that China may not attack against Taiwan. On the island of Kinmen, nestling up to the mainland coast, there are plenty who reject talk of invasion. Chen Ching Li is a veteran of the shelling here in 1958 who's invested in every sense in a peaceful future with China. He owns three flats across the water in Xiamen, but COVID and the current tensions mean he hasn't been able to visit for three years, and that worries him. So, Few Taiwanese share that faith in a peaceful resolution of their differences with China. Instead, these reminders of past conflict and the fact that these small offshore islands are now effectively isolated from the mainland could be the harbinger of a future blockade or even war.